Hello everyone, Swapna Sagar this side once again, uh, welcoming you one and all uh, to my channel and uh, uh, this time um, what you're going to do is I have received uh, uh, some questions so I'm going to cover that as well so that is a you know a bit of uh, delay in uh, uploading some of my videos so that's that's I'm, I'm, I'm sorry about that that are something happening around this part and which i cannot help as well so <laughs> so but everything is good from my side so but uh, but yes there is a delay so I'm, I'm sorry about that so with that um, let's go ahead and let's get started so uh, bhavani shankar pranika Pani Grahi, uh, Bhavani Shankar uh, Pani Grahi, who have asked me any questions. A uh, question like, um, um, talk me or just, you know, help me understand about uh, containers and uh, Docker and uh, Kubernetes. So these uh, three things he wanted to, uh, you know, ask about what's my view on that. So I have the things ready. So I'm going to pull out one, uh, uh, you know, PPT, uh, which I have get it from the internet and uh, I'm going to discuss about that. Okay. So let me share my screen and, uh, you know, so that you will come to know. All right. So first thing first, containers. So as you have seen, it's a noun and it is telling that isolated area of an OS with resource users limit applied. So basically we are talking about uh, kernel um, things, which is a isolated area. Uh, that means a namespace, right? and uh, some kind of resource users limits applied, which is C groups. So that moment, whenever a namespace with some uh, resource limits applied, like a control groups, that is where you come as at that part, it comes as a containers, simple. Okay, so it's an operating system. Operating system has kernel. Kernel has a namespace with that. The moment when you apply some resource limit using C groups, that is where your containers comes in. Simple, okay. So now next, we will talk about a little bit of Linux kernel. Uh, you have storage, you have namespace, you have networking, C group, security. So the moment these are basically the Linux kernel, okay? And you cannot interact directly uh, to these uh, kernel. So, and for the containers, we have namespace and the C groups, two things, namespace and C groups. Namespace, again, it has uh, phi, uh, which is PID, mount, IPC, UTS, and net. So that is where the namespace completely all together with that, the moment when you apply some resource limits, it becomes the containers, which is namespace provide you the complete isolation and uh, C groups gives you the resource limitations. So that is where from the kernel, it has been come up and uh, your containers has been uh, created. So that is what I have mentioned. Resource management is provided by control groups. So uh, resource management, like, you know, your CPU, memory, all those uh, sort of activities. And process isolation, it is provided by the kernel namespace. That means your PID, MNT, IPC, UTS, uh, network. So all these would be provided by the namespace. And with that, we are having storage, networking, and security, all those sort of uh, things from the uh, Linux kernel. So containers, two things, namespace and C groups. Namespace provides you the isolation and C groups provides you the uh, resource uh, 
limitations or resource management, I would say. Now, this is about the containers, okay? Now, if you are talking about the Docker, right, the, the Docker engine, so which is uh, mentioned that making containers easy, that means we uh, do not have directly interact, we cannot interact directly with the kernel. So who can do that? Now that is where the Docker engine have come into picture that it makes it easy. That is why the, it has been mentioned, making containers easy. So if you are talking about Docker containers, or docker so stop doing that okay so docker is a tool which makes containers easy containers is like based on two things namespace process isolations and c groups which is resource management so what docker do docker makes it easy for us for humans that it interact with the kernel gives you that ability around that part and gives you that saying that hey how many containers are running so it is not at all docker containers it is container docker is the tech is the toolbox right so make it correct uh, guys so that is why docker engine it is making your containers easy so we will just deep dive into a little bit of about how this docker architecture about it's like you know client server so basically the moment when you are installing docker engine you are basically installing client as well as server docker daemon or docker engine it runs and the client which is you are calling that docker to uh, daemon docker client is calling to the docker daemon and uh, whereas docker daemon the docker engine interacts with the uh, the uh, this namespace and these uh, you know all these kernel parameters and it gives you those things so basically it is on happen on the api and it connects and gives you the um, result. I wanted to call out uh, James as well as Nigel for these beautiful uh, diagrams about it. So I have taken it uh, from the internet uh, for my this, you know, showcasing uh, these things. So a little bit uh, deeper, right? So on this part, again, um, and namespace and C groups, which is a kernel part. And uh, the Docker daemon, which is uh, the um, the you know the client as well as the server, Docker daemon, Docker engine has lot many things like you know if you, if you are seeing HTTP server, it can build images, it can do execution, it can do authorization, it can build, it can runtime, it can orchestrate, it has has a REST API, volumes, network registry, what not. So basically, UI and UX, it, it, it's like anything. It can build the images, it can run the images, it can orchestrate with the swarm. So basically, Docker daemon itself has a mammoth. So it has many uh, built-in features available uh, right in front of or right out of the box. Uh, so containers, like, you know, two things, namespace and C groups. Now, Docker has took it to the next level, say, like... Uh, you can build the images, you can make a use of uh, authorization, you can make compose, runtime, you can build the images, you can orchestrate, you can you know create some uh, networking layer as well. So whatever we have seen on the Linux kernel, using only those two things like namespace and the C groups, automatically using Docker, it has enhanced the container capabilities basically so uh, containers two things namespace c groups now you want to attach a volume group to it with the volume stalker volumes you can attach to it you can you want to run multiple uh, containers on that 
so using using uh, you know docker compose or using orchestration or lib container you can easily do that so docker has literally revolutionized that part like you know container tech so that is why it is like make containers easy so i think i think you are getting into that direction so uh, containers now docker so with that if you are seeing it it is kind of big it is itself is making itself is as a very monolithic okay monolith basically so docker has come up with like uh, that you know move from monolith to microservice architecture but if you look at the docker itself it is becoming a monolith because it has more uh, things and more ui ux a lot many things so um that is where they have uh, tried to move on these uh, live container side or that interacting uh, side uh, part of it and uh, this is the current uh, you know architecture at the moment where the client the docker itself whenever you install docker uh, it get installed the docker as well as the uh, docker daemon and docker daemon which is has an api it connects to the container d and uh, container d it is the execution or life cycle container life cycle management itself again container d is not going to build anything but whereas the runtime layer on the oci side actually builds them the run c and the oci layer actually builds them and uh, creates that uh, you know container so this is how exactly the your uh, uh, uh talker Arch architecture uh, looks like so and i have also mentioned about that as well so you have got the daemon implementing the rest api container d here is the container supervised that handle execution that means complete life cycle start stop pause and then pause we have got oci layer that does the interfacing with the kernel basically container d also not able to interact with the kernel it's just the oci layer uh, again the client asks the daemon for a new container and daemon gets container do to start and manage container the run c at the oci layer actually builds them which i have already told and what is run c it's just a lightweight and portable container uh, runtime which includes all the public code uh, you now done by docker to interact with the, the system features related to the containers that means your two things namespace and c groups so we have discussed about uh, containers we have discussed about the talkers now what next now you have asked about kubernetes which is orchestration layer okay that means you have many multiple containers are running and you have to manage it so that is where the kubernetes comes into picture on the orchestration layer so which manages that so now um kubernetes it is just a container orchestrator which manages your uh, container i am not going ahead with the uh, kubernetes because uh, you have asked me three things uh, um, containers talker and uh, kubernetes so containers namespace process isolation and uh, your uh, you know resource management your talker making containers easy okay and uh, now kubernetes it is a container orchestrator that means you want to orchestrate uh, multiple containers at the same time so that is where the kubernetes comes into picture and it manages all of the uh, containers so that is why it is called a orchestrator what is orchestrator to manage multiple containers with in a uh, in a in a in a proper um, you know secured environment and uh, that is where and uh, you know you can manage them uh, at a one single uh, you know, cluster so that is where uh, this uh, container orchestrator come into picture irrespective of which node it is running irrespective of what 
uh, how many are running so you easily can orchestrate with that so i will come up with a kubernetes completely thing my blogs are available on the medium you can go through that uh, how the kubernetes orchestrator uh, architecture is looks like but uh, as the for the question i'll be you know, with that so i have already discussed so already told kubernetes it's just an container orchestrator and docker it uh, makes your containers easy and containers are two things namespace and c groups yep uh, that's it from this uh, uh, part of the video uh, next time uh, with the next uh, you know lovely questions and uh, till then till then uh, stay safe and uh, don't forget to subscribe and uh, like and comment thank you everyone bye bye